Hello everybody. Welcome to the second session of day one. Today, in the first part, we reviewed the history and that was the relevance of Hanuman today. Now, we'll take a bird's eye view of Hanuman's main work that is organ of medicine hanimans organ of medicine is the most central figure in the literature of homeopathy but somehow due to the nature of language used by him of the time in which German sentences were very complex, flowery and the pattern of literature of the time was such that it was not easy for a student like me also to understand the English the translation, English translation and that was the difficulty which most of us followed, most of us faced. Organon was translated by several persons, Wesselhoft, Dajan, Boric, these were the popular ones and Dajan's Organon was followed all through the world in English knowing people but still the language was so difficult that most of the discussion centered around the niceties of the language as a result the practical aspects the aspects of implementation in day-to-day -day practice became secondary and primarily organ was treated like our selling window by that I mean the philosophy of homeopathy and the way to convince the patient that was the target that we would like to convince our patient that he will be cured and in the process treat him but the basic treatment niceties were quite difficult to understand in recent years Stephen Decker, he translated Organon in English, current English, the English we understand today and Venda O'Reilly wrote a nice treatise on Organon, a book which is worth reading by every English knowing person. And Today, we shall take a bird's eye view of organ of medicine as chapterized by Stephen Decker and Venda O'Reilly for that matter. First of all, we shall view the 12 chapters. Chapterization was not done by Dajan nor by Hanuman. It was a continuous script and the continuity of the script was such that the thoughts followed and it was for the commentators like B.K. Sarkar to uh, explain these uh, things, analysis, etc. And students, as students, we understood. But this chapterization makes things more direct and more simple. First chapter is introduction, all of us know. An introduction is a chapter which we found it very difficult to understand. Even for a person like me who had reasonable knowledge of English, he also found great difficulty in understanding the words written in introduction and what to talk of an ordinary student. So introduction is made simpler here, we shall see that. Then there are 12 chapters. First chapter is Principles of Cure, which is from Aphorism 1 
two aphorism 70 in fact called theoretical part but uh, Stephen Decker has included 70 first aphorism also in it so this is the theoretical part subsequently there are remaining 11 more chapters second and third chapter is understanding diseases from aphorism 72 to 81 which we would uh, study as classification of disease then case taking aphorism 82 204 then uh, drug proving which is listed as acquiring a knowledge of medicine aphorism 105 to 145 and up to this was our second DMS course uh, subsequently organ and teaching has been simply simplified also in respective years and we will not go into those because this is not for a student theory class on organ this is for us practitioners to see how best we can derive the knowledge of practice of homeopathy directly in the language or in the in the literature of Hanuman. Then homeopathic treatment of diseases from aphorism 146 to 203. Chronic miasms of this chapter 6 and chapter 7 that is chronic miasm and mental and emotional diseases. Mental diseases aphorism 210 to 200. 30 we shall see then intermittent disease is chapter number 8 that is intermittent fevers as well as non-febrile intermittent disease which Henneman has uh, described in aphorism 231 to 244 then case management is from 245 to 263 then preparation of medicines administration of medicines called as pharmacy in fact and other thera therapeutic approaches that is the last six aphorisms are uh, devoted to this particular part now we shall take these one by one first of all we shall take the introduction now introduction Henneman had reviewed the allopathic and palliative medical practice of old medical school up till his time and the first was theoretical system of medicine and old school's material view of disease that is materia pecans then old school's effort to remove disease matter that is what is the continuity of that if the material uh, view is held then the cause is material and the cause is to be removed then diseases Hanuman said are dynamic they are not material that is the basis basic crux of Hanuman's teaching allopathic imitative and suppressive treatment examples have been given and written in very simple language worth reading antipathic stimulating and strengthening treatments vitamins uh, sort of not vitamins word was not there but stimulants strength gain and that is sort of toning up tonics so that strengthening and uh, stimulating is what has been condemned by him then alternative treatments of old school then flaws in old school's approach to curing disease what are the faults in that particular methodology why it cannot be cured then compound prescriptions prescribing more than one remedies a number of remedies and different names being given to those remedies so that is compound prescriptions unfortunately today in homeopathy also we have got persons who are prescribing a number of remedies at a time not in a series not one after another but parallel so running simultaneously together which is following what Hanneman had condemned then from allopathy to homeopathy that is how the practice of medicine was shifting from allopathy to homeopathy that is what examples he has given there tracks of homeopathy found in previous practices the ancient uh, schools also followed homeopathy by using similar law similia homeopathic folk remedies have been described and then finally past writings of homeopathic cure have been covered here so that takes us back to the basic chapters now first is the theoretical part so we shall see the theoretical part 
द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ क्योर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल हाइस्ट आइडियल ऑफ क्योर दैट इज मिशन फिजिशियंस मिशन देन आइडियल ऑफ क्योर देन नॉलेज ऑफ फिजिशियन दीज हैज बीन वेल रिमेंबर्ड बाय अस फ्रॉम अवर स्टूडेंट लाइफ एंड दिस इज वॉट हेनिमेन हैज इम्फेसाइज देन कॉजेज ऑफ डिजीज दिस इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एडिशन विच केम फ्रॉम फोर्थ एडिशन बिफोर फोर्थ एडिशन दिस कॉजेज ऑफ डिजीज दैट इज the fundamental cause exciting cause maintaining cause this chapter was not there particularly about fundamental causes that is after 1828 then definition of disease and cure from aphorism 6 to 8 then vital force or life force in disease and health and power of medicines to cure medicines can cure diseases because they are stronger than the disease their power is in our hands they act on all persons at all times then similar dissimilar and opposite systems produced by sorry symptoms produced by medicines and diseases what is the relationship between two similar diseases one strong and second weak two dissimilar diseases opposite symptoms all this uh, discuss all these are discussed at length which we have read it then in more more in details on dissimilar diseases from aphorism 35 to 42 and about similar diseases from aphorism 43 to 49 with examples have been described here why medicines are better at curing than are the natural diseases that is aphorism 50 to 51 homeopathic versus allopathic medical treatment has been described from aphorism 52 to 54 then aphorism 55 to 60 covers antipathic medical treatment then homeopathic versus antipathic medical treatment initial action and counter action primary and secondary action secondary counter action so that is initial and that is aphorism 62 to 66 then <coughs> initial and counter actions in homeopathic versus antipathic treatments that is 67 and 69 the word primary and secondary have been uh, changed and here instead of primary initial has been mentioned then summary of principles of cure have been given in aphorism 70 finally the aphorism 71 is a link between first 70 aphorisms and subsequent aphorisms let us see that that has been described in dajan's language here that there are three parts three points the three points have been described which is practical part of organon first up to aphorism 70 is theoretical part of organon where all theory has been explained all basic principles have been explained and subsequently from aphorism 72 onwards the practical aspects have been covered here how is the physician to ascertain what is necessary to be known in order to cure in disease cure the disease here the uh, case taking and classification of disease comes then secondly the knowledge of instruments adapted for the cure that is drug proving is the second part and third and the biggest part now look here 145 aphorisms have been devoted by hanneman in how to cure the diseases how to employ these agents for the cure of natural diseases so we can understand that the organon is not a theoretical book organon is a practical book because nearly half of it has been described to application but unfortunately we don't look into that then we go to understanding diseases in understanding diseases we see there is definition of acute and chronic disease acute disease chronic and protracted disease then case taking individualizing the examination of each case of disease then guidelines for case taking uses of a well taken case we have sessions on case taking where these points will be further covered in details so let us note that under chapter 3 it is taking the case then the fourth and fifth chapter are acquiring in knowledge of medicines that is 
ड्रग प्रूविंग गाइडलाइंस फॉर कंडक्टिंग प्रूविंग कंपाइलिंग ए ट्रू मेट रेमेडिका देन चैप्टर फाइव इज होम्योपैथिक ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ डिजीजेस दीज मोर देन फिफ्टी चैप्टर और नियरली मोर देन फिफ्टी चैप्टर हैव बीन डिवोटेड टू दिस that is power of homeopathic medicine to cure disease then distinguishing between minor indisposition and more serious disease and aphorism 153 in fact ranges from 152 to 155 on pqrs strange rare and peculiar symptoms then small homeopathic aggravations then treating diseases with an inadequate stock of medicines so when the number of medicines are less then what happens then it takes more time it takes longer time so that description is there in these 10 paragraphs treating diseases with too few symptoms one sided diseases local maladies one sided diseases with an external main symptom that is aphorism 185 to aphorism 203 then then subsequently we go to chronic myasms this chapter 6 and chapter 7 syphilis psychosis and sora syphilis being the most ancient disease hennemann has mentioned it first subsequently gonorrhea was a later one so next more uh, junior than syphilis and junior most is sora so whereas in our uh, descriptions we write sora psychosis and syphilis because we arrange them alphabetically now these have been described in short in aphorism 204 and 205 remember these descriptions were not there in first three uh, editions of organon how to treat chronic miasmatic diseases then seventh chapter mental and emotional diseases under this mental and emotional state is the chief ingredient of all diseases in first five aphorism aphorisms hennemann has emphasized that the most important symptoms are the symptoms of mind and emotion and that is what today's psychiatry is understanding and that is what we homeopathically have been telling from the time of hennemann and we are trying to implement that in our practice chronic one sided mental and emotional disease have been described in aphorism 215 to 220 which you all shall read from stephen decker's book also then acute flare ups of sora aphorism 221 that is these five remedies which we shall cover in the next part aphorism 221 to 223 then differentiating between different kinds of mental and emotional diseases this description this differentiation has been made here then emotional diseases spun and maintained by soul that is the description in aphorism 225 to 227 then behavior towards patient psychotherapy etc how deception and disguise etc etc are to be used for handling these cases has been described here and finally the success of homeopathic treatment hennemann says in aphorism 230 is best judged by the treatment of mental diseases and that is what is the most important thing so that is about mental diseases and remember in all these hennemann emphasizes the role of sora which we saw in our first session also then after this intermittent diseases then case management we shall go one by one again yes just a minute yes the intermittent diseases aphorism 231 to 244 diseases which recur at definite and indefinite intervals are described here uh, 231 to 234 then intermittent fevers have been described so this is after mental disease ninth chapter is case management here nearly 19 aphorisms have been devoted medical treatment and regimen that is the way of life lifestyle 50 millisimal lm potency medicines from aphorism 246 to 248 how hennemann introduced in 6th edition the 50 millisimal potencies 
in which each potency slightly differed from the earlier potency slightly modified increased so that the action was maintained and the duration of treatment was reduced and the aggravations were avoided what to do when a medicine does not work the obstacles the difficulties how to overcome them determine whether a case is getting better or worse whether the medicine is acting or not all types of aggravations the medicinal aggravation the disease aggravation and uh, the aggravation which is uh, homeopathic aggravation how to differentiate between them one should neither favor certain medicines nor avoid others that is there should not be any prejudices pet medicine etc patent medicine etc more loved medicine because that is going to be less effective so recommended regimen for chronic disease has been covered in aphorism 259 to 263 then preparation of medicine of chapter 10 preparation and administration of medicine by the physicians hennemann was a staunch protagonist that the physicians must make their own medicines and it should not be by apothecaries preparation of substances for medical use potentization of substances and preparation of potentized medicines directly from fresh plants so these are the chapters devoted to pharmacy of course nowadays we are not making these medicines ourselves but these uh, concepts are very much relevant even today then after this the 12th chapter that is sorry 11th chapter is administration of 11th and 12th chapter administration of single simple medicine 272 to 274 relationship between the size of dose and homeopathicity of a medicine and the risk or benefit to the patient so here the size of the dose is to be adjusted has been described in these uh, aphorisms 275 and 277 globule is the potency in fact and the size of the dose is the quantity the volume so these differences have been described here and they are very important when you find the similarity of the medicine matching with the disease the more the similarity there are greater the chances of aggravations and accurate prescribers do face these difficulties and at that time it is the job of an expert to control these aggravations because with these aggravations there is possibility of the patient even running away and today it is more relevant because nowadays nobody is ready to face aggravations if we can do away with those aggravations and 50 millisiemal potencies and the regulation of dose etc these are the developments of hennemann's progress in terms of the additions in which he has described organ and his methodology was to control these aggravations and 50 millisiemal potency was the outcome of that then treatment with 50 millisiemal potencies in these four aphorisms that is worth reading and worth practicing alternative methods for administration of medicines that is by rubbing etc olfaction then other therapeutic approaches have been described in which the dynamic power of magnet electricity and galvanism etc mesmerism and baths of pure water these chapters are practically of historical importance and uh, that is also worth reading so this is the description in short about organ of medicine i will call it a bird's eye view because this book which is very important like a holy book for us uh, organ of medicine it cannot be discussed in half an hour if in this half an hour i have been able to generate interest in you to go through the stephen decker and wenda orelis book on organ of medicine i will think that i have been able to do justice to the topic because this topic can best be understood by reading one's own self remember one thing 
don't read it for the purpose of theoretical descriptions organon is not a theoretical book organon is not a subject which is as my friend used to call it that organon is nothing but laphaji laphaji means high talks high boasting in air talks describing a word giving its 10 connotations and high flowery language is used so that ultimately one doesn't understand anything but only understands one thing that homeopathy is great that is not the purpose of organon organon is a book organon is a topic which is a practical topic that is why we have written here the practical highlights so that completes our today's uh, session on organon so if there are any questions you are welcome to ask them